drill the hole and make it over in here, around here, here, and then underneath around this turning point, and then the sail ties around the mast back to the cockpit. Hey guys, this is Lee here, and I've had a lot of feedback and a lot of comments asking me to do a video on how to install an outhaul and a Cunningham. You might ask yourself, what is an outhaul and a Cunningham? Well, an outhaul and a Cunningham are two sail controls that adjust the shape of the sail depending on the wind conditions. So if the wind is lighter or if the wind is heavier or if you have flat water or choppy water, you can make your sailing experience better with adjusting your sails with an outhaul and a Cunningham. An outhaul adjusts the bottom of the sail. It can make it more fuller or it can make it flatter. And a Cunningham pulls the front part of the sail, which is called the luff, and it can move the belly of the sail forward by pulling onto it. Now, why would you want to have these controls on a simple sunfish? When you sail, you could sail in light winds, medium winds, and heavy winds. And by being able to adjust to the different conditions, it can make you sail faster, it can make you more comfortable and sail easier. If you could sail faster and easier, more comfortable, it's just a lot more fun sailing. So when you use the outhaul and the Cunningham on a sunfish, this translates to knowledge that you could use in something like a laser, a flying Scott, a 24 foot keelboat, and even up to a 400 foot sailing yacht. I'd like to thank all the subscribers and the people who like to smash that like button for doing so because it helps the YouTube algorithm send out my video to other people like you who might benefit from this information. I enjoy spreading information about sunfish sailing and sailing in general. So if you can, please smash that like button, let those fireworks come out of it and turn it blue. I really appreciate it. Now in this video, I have my friend Peter Judge, who's going to install his outhaul and Cunningham on his boat. And I'm there to help him out and to show him a little bit of tips and tricks while we're going through this. So once you get everything together, it's pretty easy to do. It takes several minutes. Now this video is going to be mostly about the installation of the outhaul in the Cunningham. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. I'm also going to leave the products in the description so you know which parts and lines to use for the installation. So what parts and equipment do you need to install the outhaul in the Cunningham? It's basically two separate systems. The outhaul controls the bottom and the Cunningham controls the luff of the sail. You can use two of these cleats that are mounted to the boom. This one is a camp cleat racing, non-stretch line like this, which is about three millimeters in diameter or seven sixty-fourths inches. I will leave the description down below. And also you could use these thimbles that could reduce the friction when you put uh, purchases in the line. It helps make the adjustments easier and smoother. But these thimbles are optional, so you don't need them. You're also going to need attachments to screw or rivet the, the cleats onto your boom and some silicone. You're also going to need a drill and drill bits. Measuring tape. Now the outhaul line and the Cunningham line are basically the same lines. They're the same diameters. The outhaul you could get about 25 feet that's a little bit long, but you can use 25 feet and you'll have plenty. And the Cunningham line, you should be about 15 feet. And I'll leave a description of all the things and all the measurements in the description below. So I personally like to have my sail on the, on the upper spars and the lower spars. So when you do do your measurements, you can make sure that your cleats are in the right area. You don't want your cleat to be against the sail tie. You want them in between the sail ties to give your sail room to move back and forth. There's going to be two measurements, write them down and measure on your boom. When we take the measurements, you measure from the front of the boom. From here, from the junction of where the metal meets the plastic, the Cunningham will be about here at 41 inches on the bottom. And then if you go further aft, then on the starboard side at 64 inches. Now there's two areas where you wanna put your cleats and they're different areas. Most of the time you want your outhaul at the 64 inch spot and you could measure it from the front part of the cleat and you want that generally on your starboard side. If it's on the port side of the boom, that's fine. But 
racers generally will race in a course that will approach the windward mark or the first mark where they're going to make adjustments to go downwind and they'll be sitting on the starboard side. That's why you want to have the alcohol cleat on the starboard side of the boom. Now the Cunningham is at the 41 inch mark and that's measured from the end of the metal to the front part of the cleat. And most of the time the Cunningham cleat, which adjusts the front part of the sail, is on the bottom of the boom. So when you figure out the location of the starboard side of the boom and the bottom of the boom, then you can mark your marks and make small pilot holes by placing the cleat and marking where you want to drill your holes. You only need two holes and I would suggest to do a small pilot hole first with a smaller diameter burr. And then the next, after you do that, then you could drill a little bit smaller than the screw, if you're gonna use a screw, or enough so you could put a rivet in there. Now, how do you know exactly where the bottom of the boom is? The bottom of the boom is where the block straps are. That would be the bottom of the boom. So if you rotate your spar, your boom, and you locate the straps, they should be all in alignment with your cunning hand. And then that'll be the bottom. If you look at it as a compass, if the bottom of the boom is just say 180 degrees, the top of the boom will be at zero degrees. Your alcohol cleat should be facing you at 90 degrees. If it's at 80 degrees or 95 degrees, it really doesn't matter. You wanna to try to do it right in front of you so it's nice and convenient. So if you're enjoying this content, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash that like button. Now, let me give you a couple of hints that makes your life a little bit easier. The first thing is, is you have to know that there's these, these cleats are not mirror images. There's one side with teeth and one side without teeth and they have this, this turning point here. On the out haul, which is the one at 64 inches, the teeth should be facing forward. And when it's attached to the, to the lines and the sail, it makes all the sense in the world. If they were facing aft, then the teeth won't be able to grab the out haul. Out haul, teeth face forward. And the Cunningham, which is on the bottom, the teeth face aft. The teeth face towards the cockpit. So I mentioned before, hint number two, that's 64 inches. Put it on the starboard side because that's where most racers will put it. Even if you're a recreational sailor, you still want it on the starboard side just in case you go on a race or just in case you want to sell the boat to a racer. It's a lot easier for them and it's on the proper side. Is it wrong to put it on the port side? No, it's not wrong. It'll still work, but starboard is a preferable side. Now, why should the Cunningham cleat be put on the bottom of the boat? That's because you could adjust the Cunningham when you're both on port and starboard. See how that goes. It's always better to do it a little slower. It feels like I'm gonna have to. You think you'll grab it? It might, but it's gonna be tight. Tight? You're better off tighter than that. I would think. But Is it can't be impossible. No, it's going to. Yeah. So you didn't put silicone in there. You're gonna put them in later. So we're just doing this for demonstration purposes. Well, so that's on the bottom. That's, yeah, it looks good. Now, once you have the cleats drilled, you can put some silicone where the rivets or the screws will be, and you can silicone the cleats and attach them down. And once you have the cleats done, then you could attach the lines. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. There's a several ways where you could attach these lines, and I'm gonna show you basically one way that I've learned from Eduardo Cordero. He's an eight-time world champion, so he pretty much knows what he's doing. You could also do what Connor Bluen does, and he knows what he's doing too, but he does a simpler setup, a one-to-one -one on his outhaul. What I like to do is I like to do a two-to-one, which makes it easier for me to pull on it because I'm, I'm weak. Now, what I like to do is I like to put a stopper knot, wrap it around the sail. Tie it 
tie that stopper knot and the overhand knot there's and wrap it around the eyelet again that creates the two to one so we're going around the port side here and underneath then I lead it towards the cleat, wrap it around the cleat, bring it back to a purchase where I put this eyelet. So you can just put it in like this and make it overhand, not loopy. There you go. And then so the end would come in here, around here, and back through here. And then wrap it around this eyelet and it goes back. If you add everything up, it's like a thousand to one. After that, I wrap it through the sail ties so it keeps it off the deck. Do at least these three and we'll drop it around the mast. And then we'll go underneath here. Where does it go? Underneath the gooseneck. Well, I do it underneath. The reason why I go around is so it's easier for me to pull it rather than to pull it away from you, I could pull it towards me and use my body weight. And that's why I wrap it around the mast and now it goes right to the cockpit. I tie it to my centerboard and I know where it is at all times. Now to do the Cunningham, you could start with the end. You can go from this side, it might be easier. You could probably go through, let's go through these. We're gonna skip this one because you actually you don't even need this one. You can, yeah, you want to go in? Yeah, All right, let's go in. Yeah, there you go. And then we'll go up to the second grommet and down here, and then we could tie it off with just a bowline. There you go. There you go. You open? could you could also put in some purchases here also. That's where where you could have your uh, second uh, thimble. Put it maybe here. A little overhand knot. You know what, Lee? You did a turning point here first. Well, we could do a turning point. Oh, it does. Here. Okay, very nice. Yep. I see. Nice. And this is a preference. Now, if you have a lot of extra line, and sometimes you do, like Peter did, braid some handles, and then you could tie the handles in a loop and you could get a nice handle, or you could just cut it. I tend not to like to cut the lines just because every single time I cut a line, then it becomes too short for some reason. So now you have them installed. What do you do with these things? I'm not gonna go through a full tutorial on how to use a Cunningham in an at hole in the water. That's for a different video. So the bottom line is, the outhaul adjusts the foot of the sail. As the weather gets heavier and the wind gets heavier, you want the sail to be smoother and flatter. So you tighten up the outhaul and it will take out the scallops on the bottom. On the video, I'll call them wrinkles, but they're scallops or wrinkles, and it makes the belly of the sail fuller and it makes it more powerful. So you want a more powerful sail when you have light wind or if you have like medium to light wind and you're in waves because you need some power to get through the waves or chop. The Cunningham is also used to flatten the sail in the front because it takes the draft, which is the belly of the sail, and moves it forward. And what that does, it flattens the sails and it also depowers it. So if you also want to think about it, if you pull on your alpha and Cunningham, you're flattening the sail and you are making it less powerful. So when heavier winds, tighten everything up. When you're going downwind, a lot of times people want to take off the Cunningham, you undo it fully, and then they'll loosen up the out haul, which is the bottom of the sail, and it makes it more fuller. So when you're going downwind, the flat sail now becomes more like a parachute and it could help you push downwind. And then when you're at the lured mark, or if you wanna go back upwind, some people will grab it and then flatten it up to get to the upwind sail. You could change the settings as you like, and it balances out. Even a half inch to an inch adjustment on your alcohol or your Cunningham can make all the difference in the world on pointing and sailing ability and comfort.
sell as much as you can, try it out, and whatever works for you might not work for someone else, depends on the size. I'm 197 pounds, and I sail differently from like Amanda Callahan, who's like 105 pounds. Try it, go out sailing, and have fun. So if you got anything out of this video, I'm sure you could learn more by checking out this video right here. So if you haven't done it already, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you on the water.